Hello, hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Welcome. Glad to see you join. If you would, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up. I've got all kinds of stuff around me right now for props and bags and all kinds of discussion. So um, if this is your first time here, welcome. Please go ahead and hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing and tell, turning on your bell alerts. If you are a returning subscriber, then happy Sunday. Glad to have you. Hello, the closet dive. Welcome. Ladies, if you would, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Hello, Emerald Gold. Diamond Vader. Happy Sunday, ladies. So glad to have you in the chat. I have um, been admiring. Hi, K.A. Bliss. Welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Hello, DJ King. So I have been admiring the Dior, um, I guess, book tote. Coach has a book tote. Um, Dewey has like the market tote, which to me is in that same style wave, but not a true book tote. And I've been trying to decide if I'm going to put one of them on my birthday shopping list. So as I was uh, talking to Candy Crusher today, I, we kind of exchanged some messages, some pictures, some sale, pre-order information with each other. And then as I was trying to get my notes together for tonight and trying to decide on what I wanted to talk about, I actually came across a Dooney bag in my collection that for now is at least giving me book tote vibes. Now, before I show that to you, it does have a little bit of the whole saggy diaper bottom situation, even with it being empty, but it's a canvas. It, I've got two of these, both canvas, one in a solid color, one is in the, um, the uh, print that I'm gonna show you tonight. But I do believe that either with a base shaper or a bag organizer, I think that um, until the bag that I want is readily available because it's just on pre-order right now, this may kind of satisfy um, my desires for a book tote for the moment. So I'm going to show that to you. Um, if you would go ahead and hit the thumbs up, just going to check the chat again and see who else has joined. Um, I think I got K.A. Bliss, Vader, CF, T.L. Bo, Hi Keisha, hello, Dancing with Nature, Connie, uh, Sunflowerish, DJ King, happy birthday to my buddy. <laughs> I won't call the kids names on the live stream. And I think everyone else I got, if you would please, Go ahead, hit the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. So here, this this is a bag that I have had from Dooney forever. It is called, it, when I got it, it didn't even have a name. It was just called a tote with drawstring pocket. But you have seen this, I am sure, before. So you can tell it is canvas, not a coated, but a straight canvas. And... It's going to sag a little bit in the bottom once it gets loaded down. But it's giving me book tote or field tote vibes. So it has a little bit of a shorter shoulder drop, which the field totes and the book totes have shoulder, shorter shoulder drops. Some of them have additional straps that can be crossed by your shoulder. Um, many of them do not. So when I came across this in my collection, I thought, you know what? It's giving me outside organization with the pockets that the field toad and the Dior toad are not providing. 
It does not have any feet under the bottom, but it's giving me similar length and depth dimensions. It's just not as tall. But for those of you that have been with me for a while, you know that I have a little bit of an aversion to north-south bags. I, I, I'm 5'5". Five, five. I believe that my limbs are proportionate to my height. So I don't have super long legs and I don't have super long arms. So having a bag that's really north-south means that I feel like I've got to dive into that bag in order to be able to retrieve my item. So although I do have some north-south bags, I'm very aware of north-south and I'm also very aware of shoulder drops and center zips because those have traditionally for me been things that just have not worked. So to pull this out and it is, y'all, if I tell you, I got this bag from an outlet probably, my nephew just turned 17 in August. Um, and I got this bag probably when he was three. So I've had it probably like 14 years. And yes, it still has the tags on it. And no, I have not carried it. But I am about to change that. But just for kicks and giggles, how much do y'all think I paid for this bag? Let me just kind of show you what it looks like. See if my skirt top gets rolled because I sat down. But anyway, so here it is. It would definitely need something to help shape and secure the bottom so that it doesn't sag. But even some of the field totes and book totes that are available now, it is hard to, you know, get them that the bottoms don't sag. I don't know. Did I show y'all the tag? I paid a whopping $62 for this at the Dooney outlet. And I got this at the Dooney outlet that was previously in Pennsylvania before they closed. So that has been forever ago and I paid a whole $62. Outside pockets, so very similar to, um, I guess the length is very similar to the Dior and the Coach Field or Book Totes. It is much larger than the market tote, which if you're curious about that, um, you can check out the um, Military Mom and you can also check out Mono's Beauty's channel. Both of those ladies. And Sus, do you have the um, market tote as well? I want to say that Sus what also has the market tote. You can check out those ladies, their channels, so that you can see um, what the market tote is. But... Um, I see Candy Crusher just joined. Y'all can let her know why she is in the enabler corner. But here it is. So, again, no feet under the bottom. It does slouch because, again, this is canvas, not coated canvas. It has the drawstring pockets on the sides. Pretty short shoulder drop, but it's not really intended to be a shoulder bag. And then on the interior, it just has kind of the um, D-ring and the lobster claw clasp as the top and no organization in the inside. It is just a big open canvas hole. Let me see. to a different order. So I was like, that can't, that can't be it because I know I bought this at a store. But that's, that's it. So until the field tote that I'm interested in becomes available or until I suck it up and decide to place a pre-order, which I don't care what the brand is. Y'all know how I feel about pre-orders. Um, 
this is going to satisfy my book tote, field tote, wish list item for now. And it doesn't require me spending any more money because I already have it here. I just got to figure out how to keep saggy butt here from sagging. All right. So tonight, in addition to the book tote or the field tote, what I wanted to um, share are a few accessories and a few bags. And one of the bags you've actually seen on my channel before, but if you're kind of new to the community or maybe you haven't gone back deep in the archives to watch um, some of the earlier tribe videos because there were several of us that did videos on this bag, um, I wanted to share um, this bag and then I mentioned it as a kind of comparison or I've, I don't know that I mentioned it as a comparison, but we're going to talk about it being a comparison tonight, show you a few other bags, talk about how similar or different they are. Some of them I think are still readily available. Others you would have to either search really hard for or go to the secondary market, but we're going to dive um, right in. And that first bag is the Dunian Burke Pembroke Claire Satchel. It is a very structured, very structured, ladylike, elegant, tabletop friendly little bag. This bag is perfect with a business suit. It is perfect with jeans and a t-shirt. It can be brunch or lunch. It could be dinner. It could be a wedding. It could be an interview bag. It could be whatever you need it to be. And I probably should have pulled out the one that was completely unpacked, but I got an accessory that matches it, so I wanted to use this one. So let's slide that back in there. All right, so this bag is Croco embossed. It has what they call for this collection a gilded signature logo lock, but it's the terrible logo lock that I detest. But there were no other styles of this bag or different closure options. So there wasn't like a snap option. There wasn't a top zip option. It was logo lock that is reversible. So it's here in my collection and I have several different colors. And um, quite honestly, it is the one that I've carried. It's clasped when I leave home. And then after I have to go in it through the day or the evening to get anything out, it just hangs, which I hate because it deems or um, yeah, can, can deem my hardware and that constant clanking noise. But I just have such an aversion to the logo lock. And I did not realize how strong my aversion was um, until I actually finally carried one of the mini bags that I have in my collection with this lock and then realize it's a no-go for me. But at that point, the damage was already done. The dimensions on this bag, it is 11 and 3 quarter inch long. So it's shorter, a little bit shorter, um, a quarter of an inch shorter than the small Leisure or the Charleston because it's 12 and this is 11 and 3 quarter. So if you're looking for a comparison, this is 11 and 3 quarters. The small leisure or the Charleston, um, that bag is 12 inches. It's also the same or a little bit shorter in length than Cooper because I believe Cooper is also 12 inches in length. For my Cooper lovers, if you would verify that for me in the comments, I would appreciate it. The depth or the butt of this bag is 4 and 3 quarters. I believe Cooper is four and a half and then the height is eight and three quarters so a little bit shorter than most of um like the bristol 
and some of the other smaller dome satchels. This one is a little bit shorter in height than those. The under flap of this bag is suede, so not a microfiber. I know there have been um, some uh, community discussions about coach and whether or not um, flaps and under bellies are suede or microfiber for Dooney. This is an actual chocolate suede. And that's going to help with the flexibility. It's going to ensure that there's not creasing and a bunch of wear on the top and on the side um, of, the, of the flap. So it also has a back outside zip pocket. So for quick access, whether you want to put your phone or maybe it's now your mask or any of those smaller things, you can get that back here. The crocko will soften a little bit, but this is still not a very deep pocket, so it's not going to hold a ton. But the interior um, of the pocket, as well as the interior of this bag, are leather lined. So this bag, although it's small, it does have some weight to it. When I first got this bag, even though I picked up a ton of different colors, because I've have a lot of Croco in my collection and I enjoy using and carrying Croco. I only had visions of this bag as a little ladylike bag, not as a crossbody, not throwing it on um, with jeans and a t-shirt, but that's kind of the beauty of like Pinterest and other websites and um, Instagram and you can find bags that are similarly styled and see how other people are using them, carrying them, styling them. So LV previously had a bag that was this exact same Kelly bag um, silhouette and there was a fashion blogger that actually had it on with like Chuck Taylors some jeans and a t-shirt and was wearing it crossbody. And of course, it had uh, you know, all of the LV gibberish all over it. It wasn't just um, straight, a straight monogram bag. And I thought, if that can be pulled off um, with as busy as that bag was in a very casual way, then it freed me a bit more to open up the times and places and venues that I would use my bag. So it does have feet under the bottom and it is reinforced with the same Croco um, as the bag. Reversible logo lock, top handle, but it also has the D rings so that you can add the shoulder strap. The shoulder strap is adjustable. It also has the center section in it. So if you want it to shorten it a little bit and use it as a much shorter shoulder bag, you have that option. And Noble Strength has a video of her cobalt blue Pembroke. So if you're looking to kind of see it styled, long, short, top handle, crossbody, Noble Strength has an amazing video. I would encourage you to go over and check it out um, to see how she styled it and to give you an idea of what the different carries look like. It has a back zipper pocket. It also has a card slot here um, that has the Dooney and Burke logo um, on it. So if you want it to just stick maybe a debit card and your driver's license and not necessarily carry a wallet, but just those two essentials. It has kind of that built-in organization on the back wall in addition to the zip pocket. And then on the front, it has a large slip pocket as well that is large enough to fit one of the larger cell phones. So all of the essentials would have a spot plus you have the interior of the, bot, of the body of the bag and the outside zipper pocket. So this is not new. Many of you have seen
seen this bag or purchased this bag. And it was in the picture long before there was a, um, a tabby, long before there was the availability of Parker. There was the Claire Pembroke that has since come and gone. Now, when I first started um, collecting Croco pieces, I, I identified a couple of colors that I really, really liked that I felt were rich and looked more authentic than some of the other colors that Dooney um, was making. And so I bought accessories at that time. And here I am struggling trying to get the doggone clasp back on. I cannot stand this thing. In a minute, I'm going to do what I normally do, which is say forget it. And keep in mind, this is with it empty. That's how difficult it is. All right. So this has gone in many a bag. I know it looks all beat up, but it's because I've had this longer than I've had this. And this has been around the world with me many a time as a grab and go as a catch-all, as a small purse, as a phone case, you name it. Um, and it's got the PVC line in here in the interior and then the one slip. This, I think I might have paid 24 bucks at the most uh, from a Dooney outlet in Orlando back in the day. So that's that. And this is a high gloss. You can tell that the finish on the Claire is a little bit more matted where this one, which was a part of the Dylan um, logo season, is a bit more shiny. But they are the same color in the cognac. All right. Top handle, four inches. And the strap drop that I showed you, it adjusts up to... 30 inches. All right. Then there was, and you saw this one recently. It is the Dooney Rosanna in alto in the color chestnut. Remember this one? So both have outside pockets. This one is a bit taller than Claire. So this is nine and a quarter, so very similar in height to Bristol. And the Claire was only eight and three quarters. So eight and three quarters. This one is nine and a quarter. Claire has a deeper butt or more depth. Claire has four and three quarters. This is only four and one quarter, so definitely not as deep. And um, although the Dooney site says that Rosanna is 14 and a half inches long, she is not 14 and a half inches long. Um, she is actually 12. Claire is 11 and three quarters. So this one is a quarter of an inch longer. Or it has the same length as the Dooney Charleston and the small Leisure. So... Although this is more of a shoulder bag, it could kind of be considered a top handle uh, just because of the way that the straps are set on this bag. So side by side, eight and three quarters long, 12 inches long, four and three quarters deep, four and quarter inch deep, 11 and three quarters long, 12 inches long. So that's them side by side. Both of them have rear outside pockets from an organization standpoint. You have the double carry option with the top handle um, and the crossbody and adjustable shoulder drop. Logo lock closure. This has a snap closure. Feet on the bottom of Claire, on the bottom of Rosanna, you have the leather that is raised to create 
the stand or the base that this bag sits on. Definitely have a bit more organization in Rosanna, in addition to her being a larger bag with an outside pocket. She also has a pocket under the flap here. Plus, there is a back wall slip pocket, a zipper pocket, a place for you to put your cards, and a front cell phone pocket. So, difference between the two, but also very, very similar. So, if you, by chance, missed out on Claire because you weren't sure about the Croco, um, you weren't crazy about the logo live, the top handle, whatever the aversion may have been, this may be an alternative for you. But also, another alternative for me, which I could not wait to get my hands on, was after taking the plunge in coach and exploring a few more bags, I purchased Parker. And then after purchasing Parker, I realized that there was like a plus size Parker with the Parker 32. So this next bag I reveal for you tonight is the Coach Maxi Parker 32. It was um, available on Coach. It was available at several retailers, including Nordstrom but I'm not sure if it is still readily available. It is also considered a shoulder bag, so more along the lines of Rosanna. It is eight and a half inches high, so shorter than Rosanna, as well as shorter than Claire. Bear with me. And I picked this up at the start of COVID. So it's been here for several months now. All right, we'll have to we'll go back to that in a minute. Okay, so from a dimensions standpoint, this bag is eight and a half inches tall, so shorter than Rosanna, who's nine and a quarter. Rosanna, nine and a quarter, eight and a half. Claire is eight and three quarters. And this is eight and a half. So it's, a, it's the shorter of the three. The depth is four and a half. So it is deeper than Rosanna and not quite as deep as Claire. And it has the most length of all three bags. So Claire was 11 and three quarters. Rosanna is only 12 and the Parker 32 is 12 and a half inches long. Oh, the joys of suede. All right, so this bag has an outside pocket as well. Of the pockets, if I had to rank pockets, I would say that my preference is going to be the pocket of Claire because it's a secure pocket, it zips, and there will be minimal um, indentions on that pocket the way that it's set and the fact that it has a little bit more give on the back. For both the Rosanna as well as Parker, You've got to be really careful about what you put in the back because you can see that's just my finger sliding in and you can see the outline of my finger. So you've got to be careful about what you put in this pocket because there is absolutely no give. 
So this would be a good place for your mask, maybe a good place to throw a parking um, receipt, maybe um, a place for you to throw, I don't know, maybe some cash if you got to access it really quickly at the start of your, you know, visit. But otherwise, anything else is going to really distort this outside pocket. It does not have any feet under the bottom, nor does it have any kind of ledge or leathering or anything that's going to help keep the base of this bag off of the floor um, or off of the table or any other surface. It is two-toned with the taupe and the chalk, but in my opinion, with the chalk, that's even more of a reason that it needs some lift to keep the bottom of this bag from getting dirty and wearing. The bag is in the color Mushroom Multi. I think I saw that in the chat. There was a question. And it is item number 76122. Again, 76122 in the color Mushroom Multi. And the color code is V as in Victor, the number 5. P as in Paul, the number three, Y as in Yankee. And it is the color block Maxi Parker 32. Duh. I thought this was off. All right. So the bag does have a chain and leather shoulder strap, which I'm going to try to get off of here. The strap drop is 11 and a half inches when it's doubled. When the strap is in long shoulder bag or crossbody length, the strap is 20 and a half inches. It does have a leather strap or padding to help minimize with the digging into your shoulder. I'm trying to get her unpacked still. The edges on this bag are hand painted. It has a curved flat top similar to the other two bags that I've shared with you tonight. It has the gunmetal logo hardware, and it is structured as well, so it's not going to topple over. It's not going to puddle. It's going to hold its shape. It has this pull-through strap. So here on the top, pull-through for crossbody or double up for a shorter shoulder bag. Again, the back slip pocket can be a shoulder bag or crossbody. And it's tri-toned in color. So it has kind of the taupe or mushroomy color. It has chalk and then the sides of the bag are black. Just enough black for me to, to not be um, an issue. And then it also has an interior zip divider. Let's see. Oh, all of the packaging. All right, let's get her. Clearly, she's not going anywhere. She's been here since March, April. I think I ordered her late March, and by the time it got here, it was April. All right. So, let's take a look at her. Goodness. Okay. So, I'm going to get you the hardware up close. And then 
finish the suede. I was fully aware when I got this one that it was going to have the suede on the front. And I was okay with that because it's just a little bit of it exposed because of the top flap. But I was more pleased that the back pocket was leather and not suede. So I didn't have to worry about it nicking or color transfer on the suede. So that actually worked out. And it does have, again, the leather going through the hardware. Y'all see that? All right. So here we go as shoulder bag. Why does that look like the bottom sagging? It's not, but it's giving me that vibe. And then pull through, it falls just below my comfort zone. So it's right at my hip, but a little further down than what I care to have. And then crossbody, it's gonna sit a little too high for me. So that's gonna be a no. For me, it will likely only be carried as a shoulder bag with the double strap. All right, so the interior has the center divide. So it has front pocket that's part of the outside flap, then open body, and it is a dark interior. Dark, dark, dark. Then you've got the center zip divider, back open space, and then there is a back wall slip pocket in addition to the outside back pocket. So I think when I revealed this bag, I compared or at least noted that for me, these two bags were very similar. And I stand by that with the exception that this one does not have the center zip. So there's no obstruction of the interior of the bag. You're limited in your carry options in that this is purely shoulder. There's no adjustment where you do have the option of shoulder, crossbody, um, shoulder or crossbody carry option for the Parker. No feet on either. But because they're both structured, neither are going to puddle. But I do love the fact that the Dooney Alto bag does have a little bit of a lift with the edging of the bag that keeps the base of the bag from sitting flush on any surface. Back outside pockets, I do prefer if I have, I like the size of this pocket a little bit more. But as far as usability, the duty pocket does have a little bit of give so that it's not so flat that anything, I mean, there will be some things that you slide in there that you would still be able to see, but I'm able to get my hand in there without you seeing any indentions from my hand where I can barely get my finger in here without there being a silhouette outline of my finger. So those are the three from a comparison standpoint. But now I want to take a look at some accessories because I've been picking up a lot of like taupe, beechwood, taupe, I said taupe, taupe, beechwood, um, ecru accessories. So I'm curious to see if any of the things that I already have or that I picked up that I haven't shown yet will work for this bag. So the first is the Duny and Burke Carrington in the color taupe. 
No, oyster. This is oyster. So I think I could absolutely make that work. A little bit lighter, but they're all such neutral tones that I'm certain it will work. And from a size standpoint, the Carrington should fit with absolutely no problems in either section. So it's in there front with no problem. And of course, same for the back. If you wanted to stick it in the back section in front of the back wall slip pocket, there's no issues there. I would try it in Claire, but dealing with that lock, oh, it just irks me. All right, the next is my chain link wallet. I did finally move out of it, um, but I think it will go well here because the darker colored links are actually this taupey mushroom color and then you've got the offset of the black and the white with the snake that pull the chalk and the black from the sides. And of course, it's smaller than the Carrington, so it will fit with no problems. So we've got Carrington in the back, and we've got a full wallet in the front. Then I have the Nolita in Beechwood. We've seen this on here before. A little bit lighter in color than the mushroom. Not as coordinated, but they're all neutral tones. So, let's see. Full wallet, no Lita, Anna Carrington, and still no issues closing and nothing straining the top flap, no indentions on the back, no sagging on the bottom. And then the last thing that I uh, picked up, which is actually pretty new, I think this just launched, I don't know, maybe earlier this month on coach it is a they call it a large wristlet but i think it's more of a nolita and this is supposed to be in the quilted pattern so here it's kind of plain I don't know, maybe I'm not as much of a quilted girl as I thought, or maybe it's just this piece. But anyway, here it is. It says that it's a large wristlet, but it looks just like the Nolita. Let me get that out of here. So to me, they're the same. I don't know why they would call this a wristlet, other than the fact that it has the chain but this one has a strap as well and it goes across the top so let me get it unpacked it looks kind of plain i'm not super impressed but i'm unpacking it because y'all know how i feel about returns i'll figure out a way to use it incorporate it i'll put it in here it's closer it's closer to the mushroom color than the beach wood is. So, I don't 
don't know. Under the lights, it doesn't look any better to me. In person, this one is a much better, much, much better color. What do y'all think? I think the one up top, the quilted, I think is a closer color, but neither one of them are spot on. But I think this one is better than this one. Beechwood is a no-go for me. But, I mean, I like these, so I'll use it. I love the catch-all aspect. It's got two card slots. Yeah, they call this a wristlet, but the wristlets have six or eight slots in them. This only has two, so this is definitely a Nolita. So either they shipped me the wrong thing or they had the wrong name when, on, the, on the site when they advertised it as a large wristlet. And then it has a back slip pocket. A little bit of a Bordeaux cranberry-ish lining. I like the gold chain detailing. It's got a little bit of weight to it. It actually feels like it has a little bit more weight to it than even the uh, straps that they sell at the cash wrap when you're waiting in line. This feels a little bit heavier than that. But, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I've seen this in store first, if I would have picked it up. I don't know, does it look terrible? I'm just, I, maybe I'm not a quilting girl. Or maybe it's the size of the quilt. Or maybe it's the direction of the quilt. I don't know. But I don't know that if I had seen this in person in store, I don't know that I would have picked it up. Especially considering I already had the Beechwood. And I know they're two different colors. Um... I don't know. Hold on. Let me. What did I? Let's see here. Okay. Either one of them will work with my central top zip tote. I think either one will work for this for this bag. But not so much with Parker. And I'm okay with that. Not everything is going to work. Y'all see, I keep that bag close, right? So I keep going back to it. But that's a no. And this would be a, if I couldn't find anything else. But already in the interior, did you forget? I already have a Carrington. And I have a wild full size wallet and I had this before I started pulling stuff out. Let me get it all back in there. Let's just see. Can I get in here without it? Uh, <clears throat> I think I pulled all.
all the accessories out of here because I've gotten a little prop crazy in my space. So here it is. No indentions front. Got a little bit there on the side. Okay, that's that's done. And then here's the bottom. All right, so in the interior, don't judge me. This is just to kind of give you a flavor for the space or what fits. So in the front, I have a full-size coach wallet, the chain link wallet. I have a Nolita. Uh, I think this is the 19. So that's it in the front. Then in the back, I have a round coin case. I have a large slim wristlet from Dooney, just because I had that close with the Pembroke. And then I also have a regular size Carrington from Dooney. So if that's any uh, indication of how much it holds, and keep in mind that was without putting anything in the back pocket. And it also didn't have anything in the front flat pocket as well. So let me see how much of that can I get in Rosanna because Rosanna, although several of the colors are now gone, it is still available on Dooney.com in I think three colors. So let's see what I can get in here. So we got a Carrington. We got a Nolita. And of course, not, these are all flat. So quite honestly, I hate when I see people do videos like this because I'm like, uh, it doesn't have anything in it. So I'm not going to carry it empty. So it doesn't really give a good indication in my opinion of what the bag will hold but we're gonna just go with it tonight we're not gonna turn this into a sip and cuss but um let's see all right so here she is nothing in the back wall pocket in, in here is the interior. So outside pocket, I have the coach wallet, full size wallet. In the interior, I have coin case. I have the coach Carrington. And the large slim wristlet and the Nolita all in the main section. Keep in mind that's nothing in the back outside pocket. There was nothing on the back wall pocket and nothing in the zipper pocket or in the card case. So it has pretty, um, pretty significant capacity Keeping in mind that this would, this is going to take up the space that it is. Um, this is doesn't have a lot of give to it, so it could have a little bit of bulk maybe in the center, but it's not going to get any wider on the bottom. No additional space, so whatever you put in here, th there's no give on the round coin case. Same for the wallet. It is what it is. The only other thing that may change dimensions a little bit is going to be how stuffed the Carrington is. Otherwise, all of those things would fit inside of Rosanna with no problems. And I guess I should do the same thing for Pembroke, for the Claire. Um, Y'all can tell I'm not looking forward to that with that lock. 
Let's do it though. This lot is the devil. Alright. I'm I'm going to guess and say that the capacity of Claire is not going to be anywhere close to the other two bags we've looked at, but let's see if I can employ some of Phenomenal Personality's bag packing skills and see if I can get it all in there without it distorting the interior or the outside of the bag. So we're gonna go with, gonna build it like a Tetris game and see if we can get slimmest and thinnest in first. A tattletale. Let's. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Is it? Is it? Uh, uh. Hmm. Okay. Let me see. Is it gonna close? to know can a cobbler do something about this can i get this taken off and just put a snap because it would be like the perfect kelly bag you know the hermes kelly bag it has this whole same setup situation but i don't think it has an outside pocket but it does have the top handle the d-rings um the strap feet under the bottom it has a flap closure but it just does not have this so everything all right let me get back on track everything is in here and you can tell she's a little let me see maybe it was just where I was trying to configure that I popped her sides out okay there she is so she has really good capacity I would have previously referred to this as a small bag but it definitely has this medium to large carry now getting it open again to get my stuff out of here that's why it's locked when I leave home but after I fumble with this lock one time that is all she wrote for me I just can't deal with that all day can you imagine standing in line at Publix fumbling trying to get your bag open <laughs> to get your debit card to pay for your groceries? Oh my goodness. All right, just got it undone. I, I, this, this would not have been a bad idea if they had made this just a little bit longer. Just a little bit more give would have been perfect. All right, but here's, so across the top, and you couldn't see that strain across the top, I did have to lay the coin on the top because I tried on the side, but it was going to pop out the sides and not going to be um, exactly a clean, you know, look. But it did lay across the top again with no problem. See, you can tell even there on the side, you can look through and you can't even see that it's there on the top. So it fits in there. It just didn't slide down nice and neat in a corner the way I was kind of hoping that it would. Yeah, it's a no. It fits on the top, but not in the base of the bag. And then everything else slid right in. So you got your Nolita 19. You got full size wallet, large slim wristlet, and the full size Carrington wristlet from Dewey. So all have similar capacity. Um, a couple of them have a little bit more 
interior fits a little bit more comfortably than with others, but I was able to get the same accessories in all three bags. And without cursing, I got that lock off for I think the third time tonight. That's all the logo lock maneuvering I'm planning to do for 2020. Um, let's just see, let's go back to my, um, my version of the book tote and I'm going to show you capacity of it or try to show you capacity, which is completely unrelated to the other three bags. But if you are just coming in, you may want to go back and watch the replay so that you can see the whole why this is even in the live tonight. For kicks and giggles, I just want to see, because I may have solved my own issue here. With room to spare. Alright, so, the early version, pre-field tote, pre-book tote, this is bag that I picked up from Dooney many, many moons ago. It is called the Tote with Drawstring Pocket. They've had similar bags available even as recently as this past summer. I remember seeing them in Macy's when the stores reopened. Um, I also recall seeing them for a short period of time in a different pattern on ILD. So this is the reason that Candy Crusher is the VIP tonight in the Enabler Corner. We spent today talking about the field toad and my wish list and the book toad and the market toad and the price and the pre-order and the dimensions. And as I was pulling together all of my stuff for tonight, I realized that I had this bag in Dooney Canvas. So although it has a bit of the Saggy's diaper syndrome, it is more east-west, which is my preference um, as opposed to north-south bags, specifically as it relates to totes. And um, this one has outside organization with the drawstring pockets on the side, so I could still get a wallet, phone, bottled water, um, any phone chargers. All of those other things would still fit. It also would fit... I bet you remember my large bag organizer that didn't work in anything else. I don't, I'll have to pull it out and see if it works in here to give it structure. It does not have um, a place for D rings for an additional strap, but it does have just like all of the other totes. It has the shorter shoulder drop. Um, it has an open top, but it does have a lobster claw closure, and I'll show you that. But here it is as a book tote. Notice how I had to thread that up my arm because it did not clear the my past my elbow test. So I have this in a yellow canvas, and I have it in this size, and then I also have it in a handbag size. If you go back, I have a this or that video that features the color, color yellow. And both of those bags were featured in the this or that yellow um, bag series. So if you're looking to see what the others look like or the colors or what the smaller size looks like, um, that's the one that you're looking for. Do a search for this or that on my channel and then go through and it will show you all of the different colors that I've done and that one was in the yellow all right and here is 
the top closure so it's just the lobster claw and no rhyme or reason because you're supposed to be able to put everything and anything in a field tote or a book tote and i got a little bit of hodgepodge of everything in here with plenty of room to spare so i've got a bottle of water i have the large slim wristlet that you've seen in every other bag tonight full-size wallet that you've seen in every bag tonight the round coin case thanks to my tribe sister sonja covington this was one of my birthday gifts last year so that's in there I have both the new Lolita in the quilted and the Beechwood in the signature. I have two Pat McGrath uh, eyeshadow palettes that I still need to film. I have a Carrington. I have a Coach notebook. I have a pencil case, card case, no brand that's um, in and out of my work bag on occasion and then just the extra cards and stuff from At one point being kind of a dumping ground for me um, So it still had plenty of room to spare It was not super heavy, but not a great Shoulder carry as you could tell it was still even empty. It's not gonna stay on my shoulder which y'all know I don't have a lot of shoulder real estate to start with. But it did have kind of that sag to the bottom, which I don't care for. But I don't know that it was as it was that much worse full. Let me go back and look at the sag on this. One last thing, got to get my water in. Let's take a look at the sag and see no sag is acceptable in my opinion. But it is canvas, not a coated canvas, not a coated cotton. This is Dooney's canvas. And in the, I think this is a maxi quilt before it. So it, it actually looks like it looks better full. It doesn't have as much of a sag. Am I imagining that? No, it actually does better full than being empty because empty, I guess there's nothing to help hold the structure because it is, it's got the leather edging. So it's only so much give that it's gonna have, but this maybe uh oh look, look, wait a minute okay i can get it over my elbow without threading it it's not smooth but all right dior and coach this is yet another time when i'm gonna say Dooney did it first, and aside from the others coming with maybe the extra pouch in the inside, Dooney, I guess, did it better yet again because you got outside organization with the side pockets. And even though I love the interior organization, in the Parker 32 and I love the color of it. The fact that Claire, logo lock aside, has a zipper secure pocket and holds everything in the interior. Plus I get the D-rings for shoulder or crossbody. And Rosanna, even though she doesn't have a top, a true top handle, I think, oh, y'all, some of y'all are going to be mad at me because you're here because of coach, but this is yet again where I think that Dooney did it better. The croco, the, the weight of the hardware, the leather lining in the interior, the pockets, the hardware, 
the adjustable strap, the feet on the bottom. And then alto leather. So here's, and I was not, I, 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 no plans of going there tonight, but there is, in my opinion, well, let me give you a disclaimer. I have a very short list now. Um, I have a short list of coach items that are on my list. There are literally three, four if you count, that I'm still looking for another double swagger um, in a different color. But that aside, because I already have three double swaggers, so I have three bags on my coach wish list. And I will likely end up getting if not two, all three of those bags, if not by the end of 2020, then by first quarter, before the end of first quarter, 2021. Because they're readily available, pre-order is available, they're in store now, they're accessible. I have enjoyed exploring other brands. I have tremendously explored I'm growing my MCM collection. I still got a few bags from them that I want to share with you. Um, I have tons of coach accessories that you've seen on here. And I still have a big box that I have been purchasing um, throughout the pandemic or throughout the quarantine that I've yet to show you. But those are coming at some point. Um, and I even have several more coach bags that I have purchased. But I will say, and it's probably not going to be popular with some folks, but there is a bit of, I think the term is fast fashion when it comes to coach. Now, Kelly style bags, those are classic. You can find them in, in, in every fashion house from Hermes to Prada to Dooney to Coach. Um, even MCM has a Kelly style bag, some with top handles, some without. But there is a bit of a fast fashion flavor, in my opinion, with coach so when i say fast fashion it's the they do things there's there's always a new collection there's always right you can you coach will do this same bag same style in 99 different colors with 75,000 different combinations of color block yes the leather is there but i don't care what y'all say Coach, in my opinion, does not have a leather that compares to Dooney's Florentine or its Alto. Yes, they have some pebbled leather. Yes, they have um, some smooth leathers. Yes, they have glove tan. But in my opinion, they still do not have a leather that holds a candle to Dooney's Florentine or Dooney's Alto. And don't even get me started on like the Montecito or the Montepentini leathers or some of these other leathers that Dooney has um, produced. So I don't know where Coach is finding its cows highs versus where Dooney is getting ears, whether they're feeding the cows differently, whether some are living in colder climates and some are happier in warmer climates. I don't know whether they're eating genetically modified grain. I don't know what it is, but in my opinion, in my exploring of coach over the last, um, oh, wow. I guess we're coming up now on 24 months. Is that right? I 
explored all of last year. So that was 12 months plus. Okay, so 22, roughly 22, 24 months of brand exploring. And I have yet to find anything from a leather standpoint that I would say is on par or better than Dune. I know that's saying a lot because I know there are some diehard um, coach lovers in here. And I'm still an infant when it comes to coach. Um, but as I have spent more of this last part of the pandemic kind of going back to, to duty, exploring my collection, picking up some of the newer pieces like Rosanna, going back and revisiting some of the pieces like Claire, um, expanding my Viola, getting some additional leisure shoppers. For the price point, for the quality, you cannot, there isn't a fashion house out here that I think can touch the quality of Dooney at its price point. Now, Shipping, customer service, we're not even going down that trail tonight because that has been many a topic of sip and cuss. But I do believe that given the number of accessories, the fast fashion accessories that I've picked up from Coach, which I appreciate because I couldn't get that from Dooney. There's only so much that captures my attention at Michael Kors and Fossil and MCM and some of the others. Um, I just, I, I think that if, if you are looking for classic, timeless styles, something that can be worn in and out of season, something that can be worn by somebody at 25, 45, 55, 85, then that's going to be Dooney. I know y'all know me and Peter have been separated. We've been in divorce court. I have, you know, slipped out and had affairs with other brands. But at the end of the day, I cannot think of, let me think, let me, let me for, before I say that. There, there are only a handful of bags from Dooney that I would swap for anything coach. Specifically, that Riley Roxy crossbody situation, which was is is the worst bag steal that I have purchased from Dooney. I've got a video on that. I would swap that without even thinking about it for a, a coach double swagger. I would swap it for another Parker 32 in a different color. I would swap it for an all red, which I have not seen. If y'all see it, if it appears, let me know. Um, Cassie, that bag could go. Um, my large Dawson, which I think I finally <laughs> put away somewhere. That thing is like carrying luggage. I absolutely love the color, love the organization. It carries much better with a different shoulder drop. Um, but that is a bag that if I had the option to switch um, that bag for something else in coach, I probably would. But to say that I would swap any Florentine or any Alto or any of my signature pieces or any of my all weather leather for anything coach, no ma'am. No, ma'am. And I talk a lot of trash. I spit, put, I work every day, put my money where my mouth is, my mouth where my money is. I've never been given anything that I've shown you um, on this channel except for those pieces that were gifted to me by um, the Purse Fairy, which I was very transparent about. So I feel like I've built a collection and carried enough pieces and looked at enough brands and done my research where I can compare and based on my measure of quality.
right? Because everybody's level um, of quality is different. Based on my standard and my level of quality, coach has a fast fashion element to it. So when I think about all of, because it happens, we're coming into that time of year where I will get very frustrated along with many of you of, there's not anything new from, from Dooney during the holiday season or it's they're catering to people that haven't purchased all year. That's true. And it's true because Dooney is not a trendy, fast fashion fashion house. It, they, they just aren't. If you think about the shoes that Dooney has released, they've done... The boat shoes in Florentine, they've done it in pebble leather. They did the slides. Um, they had rain boots, which I'm still waiting for them to redo because I sold my pair. Um, they have also had... Is that it? Yeah, so not a ton. You're not going to find... 99 different pairs of shoes on Dooney's site. They're going to be very tailored, very specific. I think some of... Um, Dooney has a tendency to sometimes be first or to be very close in its releases to some of the bigger fashion houses like Hermes, like Prada, like Chloe, like Gucci... And they get into that. They do whatever they're going to do early on, sometimes before it's trendy, before it catches on. And then they're off to the next thing. And sometimes I think that there are very long periods of time before that next stroke of genius um, appears. And sometimes it's there, but because their website is so dysfunctional when it comes to what's new, Sometimes an item is already on sale or on clearance before we even know that it was even released because of that functionality of their site that seems to lag significantly. Um, you could probably go on Coach Outlet once a week and find something new. Again, fast fashion. How many double zip wallets can you have? How many prints? How many leathers? I, I've lost count because I fell into that fast fashion. I like it. It works for me. Y'all know I'm a fan of that. Y'all know I'm a fan of the Nolitas. You've seen those here tonight. But the as, as I'm looking at my space and trying to figure out what I'm going to do to kind of bring some calm back to the Dooney Vault space, I don't know that I am going to continue with the fast fashion because I didn't build this channel off of fast fashion. I feel like I started my platform with a collection that was timeless, that was quality at a price point that was affordable for the everyday person without spending a mortgage payment. Um, or the kids' tuition money. So Dooney is at that price point where you can still do both, right? Um, without there being such long periods between purchases and without putting stuff on your credit card, it's at a price point that is very everyday um, affordable. But I will also say I've enjoyed my coach pieces. There are three pieces remaining on my wish list. Um, but I think as 2020 closes, I think my um, exploring of fast fashion with Coach is nearing an end. Now, I can say that because I have gone Coach crazy this year, and I still have plenty of stuff to show you. So even after I tell you I'm not spending any more money with them, there will likely be new things that you continue to see just because I've been I've been sucked into the vortex of fast fashion. But when I think about a Kelly bag, when I think about a Claire, when I think about 
a rosanna when i think about a medium satchel or when i think about a tote um there 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 just isn't a comparison and i'm just thinking about if i had and this is gonna piss some of y'all off so that i already did cotton large leisure shopper or my taupe pebbled leather central top tote that you just saw on here <laughs> coach can eat their leather i will take my coated cotton from dooney over a coach tote any day i still love that piece i will continue to carry it and use it i have since purchased other coach totes but when i think about travel and on the go and organization and function i will take dooney's coated cotton or its canvas any day over coach and its leather lined lack of organization in the interior am i going to continue to use my coach pieces yes i am Am I going to purchase the items that are on my coach wish list? Yes, I am. Um, will I ever purchase coach again? I probably will. But hand to God, 2019 was the first time I'd ever in life made a coach purchase. Retail, boutique, outlet, you name it. When I tell y'all I'm an infant when it comes to coach, my very first coach purchase was in 2019. So when I tell you I've gotten pulled in to fast fashion really, 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 really quick, I did, um, and I've enjoyed it. But I coach lost me before they even had me with all of the signature monogram, the knockoffs. I, I, I was one of those people, nothing against Walmart. I worked for them for many years and made a ton of money while I was working there. Um, and it will enjoy their stock into my retirement. So I have nothing against Walmart. But there was so much coach in the store with employees that are making you know, nine, 10 bucks an hour to the express checkout line. And maybe I just didn't have a skilled eye, but I couldn't tell the knockoffs from the genuine coach pieces. And at that point, I was like, that's not a brand for me. If I can't distinguish between the two, this is, this is not a brand for me. So I never, ever purchased from coach until 2019. So everything that you see, everything that I have shown you, everything at this point that you will see going forward until I get my final three wish list bags, that's all been purchased since January 1st of 2019. And it was because Dooney was at a point where they were, in my opinion, falling short and they were not keeping up with fashion. I'm not looking for Dooney to become fast fashion. But I at least wanted there to be a bit more from an offering standpoint, and they lacked that. Um, so I fell into coach and fell deep. I explored more in Michael Kors because it was Michael Kors accessories for me. Um, I took the plunge into MCM, and oh, how I have plunged <laughs> into MCM. Um, I love their totes. I love their Bostons. I absolutely love their large Claire's. I love the medium Claire, but it's a one and done for me with the um, with the medium Claire. But if I had to put, and I'm looking over here at this coach bag, if I had to put MCM's Napa leather against my central tote, It's MCM. I can't think of anything that I would compare coach against that I own 
where coach would win from a leather standpoint. And I'm thinking long and hard. Uh, there's no comparison with Safiano. I would take coated cotton or canvas. Oh. Mm-mm. No. No. But that's me. That's how I've defined quality. It's me traveling, not babying a bag. It's me using my Florentine as an umbrella. It's me treating some of my Florentine and refusing to treat others. It's me who paid full price for the Alto Giovanna after being influenced by my former co-worker Denise and using my Alto bag every day because it has softened up, it's scratched up, dinged up, and I love it even more. So, I know what I would take coach over. I would take coach over... A couple of my Henry Bendel bags. Some of the Henry Bendel totes, like the influencer totes, I would take coach over those, even though they have a bit more organization. But I would do that only because I had that glazing issue with the strap on my Bowery tote. So that put huge question marks in my mind about the HB brand just kind of in general. But if I had to choose between Coach's Leather and HB, in that case, I would hands down choose Coach. So they, they do have a place. But Henry Bendel is no longer available. So I think that says a lot. Um, and coach, of course, has had its glazing issues. So it's not without, you know, a spotted pass itself with glazing issues. Um, but if I had to, yeah, I keep looking at it. I, I, I would. I would take that over what was absolutely fast fashion with Henry Bendel. They didn't call it a, what is it, a girl's playground um, their flagship store. They didn't call it that for nothing. It was, uh, a, I think that's where Kate Spade kind of gets its vibe from. It's from the HB because they had a little bit of everything. I would take Coach over HB just because of the leather, some of the glazing issues because I've not had glazing issues. But over... My Napa leather from MCM over any leather from Dooney, not going to happen. But I'm going to carry my Parker 32. <laughs> and I am going to clear off the remaining three items that are on my wish list. Um, and then I think that's going to be it for me for Coach with both bags and accessories because I've got to figure out a way to store all of those accessories because it is got out of hand really, really fast. <laughs> Pun intended. So thank you, ladies. So let me hold on. Let me let me check the chat. Um so fancy girl, she phenomenal personality, Mono's beauty, Mrs. Q, hello, hello. Vader, bad crazy diva, Lucinda, hello, hello. Hi, Rosalind. Um, hi, Mo. Let's see who else. Who else am I missing? Bad, crazy, diva, fancy, Mo. Suz. Um, I think I've got everybody. At least that's as far back as the closet dive. Jules Fields, welcome. Glad to have you. Candy Crusher is hanging out in the enabler corner. DD, hello, happy Sunday, welcome. Who else do we have in here tonight? I think DJ King dropped off because 
one of the kiddos is celebrating their birthday so they're doing birthday dinner tonight and Teresa Johnson hello hello I hope all is well with you and your dad um, let's see y'all have been busy in the chat tonight I usually go back after the chat or the, after the live stream ends and I will go back and read the chat but I actually read it in reverse order. It actually makes a bit more sense. Because <laughs> otherwise, when you're reading it down, you got all of the other stuff bouncing in. So I can, I, anyway, that's that's me. I read the last chapter of a book before I touch the first one anyway. Sunny skies, hello, hello. Happy Sunday, B-Star. Happy Sunday, welcome. Who else do we have in here? Sunflowerish6, Angie Heart67. Welcome. Hello, Purse Delighted. Happy Sunday. Who else do we have in here? Y'all have been super busy in the chat tonight. Did I have to say hello, Lucinda? I think I did, but if not, hello, Lucinda. Regina Ferguson is in the chat tonight. Hello, Regina. Hello, Shirley. Happy Sunday. Shani Call Handbags and Happiness. She um, has a new channel, so please make sure that you are checking her out. Welcome her um, to the handbag community. I uh, watched a few of her videos on yesterday and uh, she asked about the live stream and I told her to come on over at six o'clock. We would all be hanging out. So please welcome her to the Dooney Addicts community and as a part of the handbag tribe. Who else do we have in here tonight? Hello, Carmen. Happy Sunday. K. Bliss, Vader, CF, TL, Bo, Keisha M. I'm sure I think I'm getting back to the beginning now because I remember greeting you ladies. Dancing with Nature 925, Diamond, Emerald Gold, and the Closet Dive. I think I got everybody tonight. If not, charge it to my wandering eyes and not my heart because I did try to capture everyone tonight i think i saw a couple of highlights let me go back to the places where i saw red so that i can see what the comment was that was directed to me okay <clears throat> so diva says that i should be able to get a bag shaper from ebay or amazon can somebody tell me how those dimensions work like do i just measure the bag and then get something shorter so that it fits in does it automatically come curved? Do I, I, how, how does that work? I've not purchased an actual base shaper. I've purchased bag organizers, but not a base shaper. So if somebody can help me with that, the education would be good for me. Everybody else probably already knows how that works, but I don't. And I'm okay being transparent about not knowing. Um, I think there was another comment that was highlighted for me in red. Where did it go? Okay. Okay, so Diva is saying that I can probably take my Claire's to a cobbler and let them know what issue I'm having and that they can probably fix that. Because honestly, I like this detail. But I would also be okay with, like, taking this completely off. I don't have to have anything on the front. Um, I really don't. And just put, give me, a, give me a, 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 a magnetic snap, which would actually make it look even more like a Kelly bag. It does look kind of plain like that. Mm. And then it would be even more plain without that on the front. Yeah. 
this just needs to be a little bit longer, but I don't know how to get this longer. Like if you got this bag really stuffed, it is the devil to get in and out of it. Especially if you've got anything up at the top that may be putting a strain on this top flap. Terrible. Terrible. So I, I, I'll have to see what a cobbler can do to help me with that. And I think that was the last comment that was highlighted in red for me. Um, oh, Okay, so Phenomenal Personality is asking the name of the tote when it didn't have an official name. It's just called Tote with Drawstring Pocket. The item number is H is in Harry, C is in Charlie, 922. And the color code is the number 7X which is the natural black with black is how they have it with black trim so black with black trim natural black so natural black with black trim and it's hc 9227x and it's called a tote with drawstring pocket i don't know if the yellow one is called the same thing but i think in that this or that video i think i showed a tag but i think it's a pretty good field tote book tote alternative and although i love the market tote the look of the market tote it's it's not gonna hold as much as that one holds hands down not gonna hold as much see all right i think that's it i only if if you did something other than spelling out the at duny at 615 then it didn't highlight in yellow so i'm not ignoring you i just it's not it doesn't highlight to catch my attention if you abbreviate it so i apologize for that but that's it i think um No, it didn't have all the chains and all of the three different colors. and But those also don't have the center zip that disrupts the interior of the bag. Zipper pocket on one, little bit of a gusseted pocket on the other. I like my Parker 32 when I carry it. I bought boots to go with it and have a coat that's going to pair perfectly with it. I've got a new blazer that I think is going to go gorgeous with. I have a winter white um, pantsuit that has a little mushroomy, taupey lace camisole that goes underneath. So I've options for this bag, but it doesn't change the fact that I'm still going to put the Parker along with many of my coach acquisitions in the fast fashion trendy category. It is what it is. So thank you ladies for watching. Thank you so very much for supporting the Loving My Soul series. I have had a ball um, filming those and I've got a few more to film and they'll just kind of gradually go up over the next um, couple of months but I have enjoyed that and especially getting them filmed and wearing them and being able to pair um, as I film a few more I may start posting pictures of the shoes with the bags that I've kind of paired them with on Instagram if there's an interest in that but um that's that's what you can look forward to there's beauty their shoes and their handbags that are coming through the end of 2020 and then i will likely push some of the videos that i have filmed for like 
Wednesdays and Saturdays, probably into 2021, so that I can do those usual year in video reviews that you, you know, that flood the internet during that time. So thank you so very much for watching. Please make sure that you hit the thumbs up before you head out. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Until next time, I do hope you find something that feeds your daily addiction. Take care.